Okay, so we spoke yesterday about the Ezra Snashim. We spoke yesterday about the Ezra Snashim of the Beis Hamikdash, starting from the Ezra Snashim of the second Beis Hamikdash, and from there we'll go to see about the Ezra Snashim in the third Beis Hamikdash. Firstly, we mentioned, and just to go over the concept, the Ezra Snashim is not something which, according to the Torah, is part of the Beis Hamikdash. In the Mishkan, there was no Ezra Snashim. Some say that in Shiloh there was an Ezra Snashim. That's so that's the implication from the Tandvelio, if that's what it really means. Whatever the case is, in the first base of Mikdash in Malachim, when it describes Shleima Melech building the base of Mikdash, there is no description of the Ezra Snashim because it's describing just the base of Mikdash, therefore, it doesn't say this part which isn't part of the base of Mikdash about. Probably 150, 200 years after Shleim HaMelech built the Beis HaMikdash, you have King Yehoshaphat. King Yehoshaphat is a great, great grandson of Shleim HaMelech. The Pasuk says in Divrei HaYamim describes how he's standing in front of Chatzer HaChadasha, the new courtyard of the Beis HaMikdash. The Gemara says this refers to as Rasnashim, but it does not mean that they just made it then. And in fact, like we mentioned yesterday, even the Mitsudas and the Radak want to explain in the simple meaning, they just say they refurbished it perhaps. But nobody says that it was just made then, implying that it was there already from before. So it must have been there from the beginning, although it doesn't say that clearly. It must have been there from the beginning. The thing that they did then was they made a new halacha in the Ezra Snashim. They said that the Ezra Snashim, even though La halacha is only part of Harabayis, it's part of Machni Levia. They made new halachas at that time, like, um, which is the fact that the inside the chel, meaning inside the area surrounded by the soyrik, surrounded by the picket fence we learned about, in the 10 am, the, the, the um, 10 am is closest to the Beis Amikdash. There's different halachas than the rest of Harabayis. And even more so in the Ezra Snashim, they made it into also more halachis. Not still not like the rest of the Beis Hamikdash. You could still sit there. Still, certain uh, people who are tummy can come inside there. But they gave it. They up the status of the Ezra Snashim during the time of King Yehoshaphat. In the second Beis Hamikdash, as soon as they built the Beis Hamikdash, they built the Ezra Snashim. Part of what they did, they made a copy of something that will be in the third Beis HaMikdash. So we learned about this last time, but let's look at it again now. The Ezra Snashim in the third Beis HaMikdash is very different than the Ezra Snashim in the second. The Ezra Snashim is the Azara Chitzayna, the outer Azara. The Azara Pnim is the inner Azara, that is the Azara of the actual Beis HaMikdash. Most of the Beis HaMikdash is this outer Azara. So unlike how we have it in the second Beis HaMikdash, this is from east to west. It's a square of 135 Amis by 135 Amis. Only past here do you go into the actual Beis HaMikdash. You can also enter the actual Beis HaMikdash from one of the other seven, six or 12 gates that there are without having to go through the Ezra Snashim. So the Ezra Snashim is very much of a added part. Whereas in the third Beis HaMikdash, the, inner, the outer Azara surrounds the inner Azara from all sides. The inner Azara is directly in the center of the outer Azara. In order to get to the inner Azara, you have to go through the outer Azara. Three gates, the outer Azara, east, north, and south. Three gates in the inner Azara, east, north, and south. No gates on the west side of either. They're parallel to each other, the gates. But if you want to go into the inner Azara, the only way to get there is through the outer Azara. We mentioned another interesting thing, that the Heichal is actually inside the outer courtyard. Although it opens up to the inner courtyard, 
And in fact, we will learn hopefully a different day that this area beside the Heichal also has the Din as if it was the inner Azara. Which means in the third Beis HaMikdash, we're essentially taking something that's not Beis HaMikdash, we're transforming it and making it into the most important part of the Beis HaMikdash. Now, on the corners of the Ezra Nashim in the third Beis HaMikdash are three rooms described by the Navi as courtyards because they're quite large rooms, 40 Amis by 30 Amis, and they're on each corner. These courtyards are used to cook. What do they cook in them? The shlamim. They have a counter, a wood, a stone counter with holes for pots, and they lit the fire under it. They cook the carbon shlamim. In the second base of Mikdash, they didn't do this because there's no need for it. The carbon shlamim, a person takes a carbon shlamim, he goes home and eats it at home. You can eat it in the entire city of Yerushalayim. The other carbonates you're not allowed to take out of this area, even though we're going to learn about these buildings. They had a Kedusha like the inner Azara. They would eat the Kachikachim. They will eat the Kachikachim in them. We'll learn more about those a different time. But the idea is that this is only for Karban Shlamim or other Kachim Kalim. Why are they cooking them in here if they could eat them in the Holy Rishalayim? I don't know why. That's just what the Navi describes. Perhaps there's an extra thing in the third base of Mikdash. They want to cook the Karban is Dafka in the base of Mikdash. Regardless, in the second base of Mikdash, they saw no need for it, but nevertheless, they added these rooms. So these rooms have no roof, so that the smoke can go out, and they're used for cooking. In the second base of Mikdash, they made these rooms also. It's interesting because most of the drawings and many of the commentaries, we mentioned this yesterday, say that it's 40 by 40. The Mishnah and the Rambam only mention the dimensions of 40 Amis. They don't mention a second dimension. So many people just assume that it's probably 40 by 40. The Rebbe quotes Mepharshim that say it's 40 by 30, and the Rebbe says that it is probable that it, will, it was 40 by 30, because if they made it to be the same as the second, third base of Mikdash, they probably made the same dimensions, and that's why the Mishnah doesn't mention the other dimension, because it's obvious. Whatever the case is, these are the four rooms they put, but they did not use them for cooking. One of them was actually used for cooking. The Lishka on the east, on the, on the southeast side, I believe, that was where the Nazir, where the, the Nazir would bring his, cook his carbon shlamin because he had to take a haircut and burn his hair in the fire under the shlamin. That was supposed to be done near the base of Mikdash, and that's why that was done there. Otherwise, they would use them to uh, check the wood for, for, uh, for um, worms, or they would use it for other uses in these other things. There was the lishka for the mitzrayim, where the mitzrayim would get it tired, and there was the lishka for the uh, where they would put the oil and the wine, which they would use to sell it for the nesachim. But they used it for those other. But they put it there because there's going to be that in the second, third base. There's another thing which actually its place is different in the third base amikdash, and that's the lishka sasharim. The rooms where the musical instruments were, they were on both sides of the steps and 15 steps, which actually in the third base of Mikdash, there is no number 15 for steps. It is only in the second base of Mikdash that has this number of steps. And on the sides, you have these rooms where the Levim kept their musical instruments. In the third base of Mikdash, we'll see in a moment where these rooms were. Let's go to the Ezra Snashim. There's another thing just to mention is the, does no, there's no uh, specification where its place was, but there was a room for the Sanhedrin Kitana, for the small Sanhedrin. So this is as a snushim, it's a huge uh, courtyard. This is the gate. This is where you went in. Was it only women there? No, there were women, there were men. Possibly there were more women, possibly according to the Rambam, it seems that the balcony was there the entire time, the whole year, so the women probably went to their balcony all the time. Others say it was put up only for sukkahs. But the idea was that this is a place which specifically, this is the area of the nation. Just to mention an, an interesting point. We call this the Ezra Yisrael, these 11 Amis. Does that mean that Yisrael is not allowed to walk here? It's not. People take that wrong. It's not that Yisrael can't walk here. 
It's that this is where Yisrael would walk. He had no business here in a usual time. This is where Kayanim were. If it was a Zor who's allowed a Shecht, he would go here to Shecht. A Yisrael can go in any of the other areas as well. Same thing. This is called Ezra's Kayanim up until the Mizbeach. Because if a Kayan wasn't doing a Vaida, this is where he stood. If you have no reason to stand there, there's no reason. Same thing here with Ezra's Nashim, not because women are not allowed to walk in the Zara. It doesn't say anywhere that women are not allowed to walk in the Azara, but this is usually the court where the women would stand. If they had a reason, for example, this is called the Shara Nashim, where a woman would go inside it to watch her carbon, she wouldn't just stand in the gate, she would go into the Azara to watch her carbon being brought. But this is generally the place where women were, as well as men who didn't have a reason to be watching their carbonus. Now let's go on to the Ezra Nashim of the third Beis Amikdash. And a few interesting points. First of all, just to mention where the Lishka Sashonim, the uh, rooms for the Levim to keep the st- store their instruments, were alongside these gates. There was one alongside the northern de- gate facing south, which means facing the inner Azara. Unlike in the second base of Mikdash, where it's facing outside, it faced the Azara Snashim. Here, these rooms to store the musical instruments were actually facing the inner Azara. There was another room also for Kayanim by this gate. Um, I don't know if that's also, apparently that's a Kayanim, is a Lishka for Kayanim. Maybe they had that in the second base of Mikdash as well. Maybe similar to what they would store in the base of Mikid, but there's another room over here. But let's look now more at the actual Ezra's Nashim. Over here on the sides, there's a porch. Now we learned about a porch in the second Beis HaMikdash, which also, according to the Rambam, apparently this porch was only on the eastern side. Even though the Rambam says the porch surrounded, does that mean it actually surrounded the entire Ezra's Nashim? Possibly, but it seems in Peter Shemeshnais, the Rambam writes, that there didn't used to be a wall over here. So Yisus Yamdav says there must have been a fence because this is six amis higher than Harabais. You can't have no fence. But there didn't used to be a wall. It was totally open. When they built for the women, they built, it looks in the Pirush HaMishnais of the Ram like they built bleachers. He says they made sort of like steps. A lot of people translated that they made steps to go up to the balcony. But if you look at the Rambam, he's not saying that. He says they made something like steps, meaning probably like bleachers with with, uh, different levels so that the women could stand on different levels and they're able to watch by the Simchas Beis HaSheva. But the Rambam doesn't mention Simchas Beis HaSheva. It implies that that it was there mostly for the Simchas Beis HaSheva, but it remained there all year. This is a different type of porch. This is a porch which is 50 amis high and it has rooms, five rooms on either side of the gate. So the porch goes from the gate and it's the same height as the gate. The gate in the second base of Mikdash, all the gates were 20 amis high, 10 amis wide. In the third base of Mikdash as well, the gates are 10 amis wide, but the gates of the Ezra Snashim and possibly also of the inner Azara were fifth will be 50 amis high. The height of the gate is 50 amis, and this is also the height where the porch is. The porch is more like a second floor. Five rooms over here. It stops over here, even though the Pasuk doesn't say that clearly. The Taisvis Yamtev says it must have stopped over here because otherwise this room we say can't have a roof, and it's like a roof. So it went in between this room on the corner and the edge of the gate. Here also another five, altogether 30 of these rooms. What are they? I don't know, maybe offices, maybe something else, whatever it is, this is what the Navi describes, these 30 rooms altogether that will be all around. You didn't have this in the second base of Mikdash. On the other hand, in the second base of Mikdash, you had rooms in the width of the wall, which we don't find in the third base of Mikdash. So these are these rooms that are going to be all around besides from the Western side. Now, some of the commentaries say that there will be a balcony on the Western side, just no rooms. Others say no balcony at all, but everyone agrees that on this side, there's no rooms. So the rooms are only where there are gates in between the gates and the cooking rooms. So this is where these, there's these offices on top. Um, that's the actual 
balcony that's here in the Aziz Nashim. Now, if we look at something else, which was in the second Beis HaMikdash, which we don't find something like that in the third Beis HaMikdash, and that's the Beis HaMikid. The Beis HaMikid, besides for the four rooms that it had in it, in these four rooms, one of them they used to hide, to put in Gniza, the stones of the Mizbeach that became, uh, this, that, were, um, that were defiled by the Greek kings. And another one they used for uh, the, one, the ones inside is where they would use to keep the sheep for the carbon tamid. They would use it uh, inside. They would use another room for, um, for other, for, for making the, the uh, chavitin for the Kohen Gadol. In here, you had, uh, so for the various needs of the karbanis, but here you had a, room, a, a door, a room where there was steps or an elevator. Many of the Mepharshim say they had like a pulley type of elevator and they would go down to the basement. In the basement was a very interesting thing because this basement went below the entire Beis HaMikdash out and it went also below Harabai straight to, till the gate of Harabai. In other words, it went through below the area outside the Beis HaMikdash till it came out on Harabai. This was like a tunnel, a basement under, under, the, uh, under the entire building. Besides for under the area of the Mizbeach, where you weren't allowed to have the Mizbeach, has to be solid ground. The Beis HaMikid itself is where the Kayanim, who had to do the Avaidah the next day, they would sleep there. So the entire week, the Kayanim would have by week, they would have their roster of doing Avaida. The entire week, those Kayanim would sleep in the Beis HaMikid. The older Kayanim had stone slabs to sleep on. The younger Kayanim would sleep on the floor. They had a, a door from here going out into the Azar and a door going out onto the outside. It had a constant fireplace. That's why it's called the Beis HaMikid, the house of the hearth, because there was always a fireplace there in order to keep them warm, the Kayanim were, would get cold because they were walking barefoot on the cold tiles. So they came here to warm up and down in the basement, there was a mikveh, there was a restroom, which uh, it says the special, special uh, yichas of this restroom was the fact that if you found the door locked, you knew someone was there and you didn't go in. I guess it didn't happen on a regular thing. But this was the idea. This was what they had over there in the basement for the Kayanim to go to the mikveh every morning before they would go and proceed to do the Avaida. They would go to the mikveh. So this was the base of uh, in We're going to learn Be'ezer Hashem on Sunday. We'll go more into the gates of the third base of Mikdash, which are quite different than the gates of the second base of Mikdash. There is rooms on either side and it's 50 amis high, and every single gate has a entrance hall. So just like the Heichal of the second Beis HaMikdash had an ulam, an entrance hall, every one of the six gates of the Beis HaMikdash has also an entrance hall, which we will learn about and perhaps explore also, will there be technology, maybe even Wi-Fi, in the third base of Mikdash. So let's do that Be'ezrus Hashem on Sunday. A good Shabbos. We should see the base of Mikdash, not only spiritually, but we should see it in our, with our physical eyes and see Mashiach who's standing on the rooftop of the base of Mikdash announcing Higiyazman Gulaschem. Good Shabbos.